OpenAI has really failed this time. If you watch my channel a lot, you'll know that something that really gets under my skin is the new fashion of tech companies promising big and delivering small on AI in a complete reversal of everything we learned in Business 101. At its spring announcement in early May, we were promised a Mac-only ChatGPT app coming in the next few weeks. And now, more than a few weeks later, an app has finally dropped. Is it the one they demoed? Not even close. So let's take a look at what they promised and what they delivered so you can share in my disappointment. Before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Co-Pilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. You'll remember the spring open AI event as the one where an AI assistant sounding, according to Scarlett Johansson, a little too much like Scarlett Johansson, met a guy who could best be described as doing an impression of how phones used to be used for vulgarity before unsolicited airdrops became a thing. Okay, here I go. <laughs> These kids today. But putting that aside, one of the big announcements was an upcoming ChatGPT app that could do things like this. On the screen, we have some code, and then the ChatGPT voice app is on the right. So ChatGPT will be able to hear me, but it can't see anything on the screen. So I'm going to highlight the code, command C it, and then that will send it to ChatGPT. And then I'm going to talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there, how's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a coding problem today. Of course, I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? Okay, I'm going to share with you some code. One second. Sure thing. Take your time. Okay, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one-sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period. So when I saw a post on LinkedIn telling me the new app was now available to everyone, as long as you had a Mac, I excitedly pulled an M2 Mac Mini out of my closet to take a short trip over to the dark side and try it out. This is exciting for a number of reasons, but the biggest for me is that Microsoft recently demoed something really similar for the Copilot Windows app that using GPT-40 was able to help someone play Minecraft. Hey Copilot, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great, and it looks like you're about to dive into some Minecraft. Ready to build, explore, and Maybe dodge a few mobs? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make a sword. My son plays this game all the time, and I have no idea what I'm doing. No worries. I'm here to help you impress your son. I see you've got a crafting table in front of you, which is a great start. To craft a sword, you'll need some materials. Can you open your inventory? Just press E on your keyboard. Yeah, uh, do I have what I need? Let's see. You've got some sticks, perfect for the sword's handle, but it looks like you're missing the material for the blade. You can use wood, stone, iron, gold, or diamond. And while I don't play much Minecraft because I'm not 12, and obviously Stardew Valley is much more my thing anyway, the idea of bringing capabilities like those to Windows to deploy against actually useful workloads is actually very exciting. So getting a kickstart to seeing how ChatGPT delivers this experience on a Mac is something I'm very interested in. Let's jump into getting this set up and trying it out. As always, demos you see on this channel are recorded using sample accounts and data, and you never see anyone's private information. Before we start the demo though, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like to help it get in front of more people. And if you're interested in seeing more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. So we have to start off at openai.com. I don't think that this app is currently available in the um, App Store, but we can download it from here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download the app and then we can install this. Then we can go ahead and launch the app um, and you can either sign up from here, continue with Google or log in, depending on what kind of account you've got. 
So I'm just going to log into my standard um, ChatGPT account. Once you're logged in, you can see that we have a ChatGPT window here. Um, we have the ability to find our archived chats. We can change which model we're using and take a look at any GPTs that we've been um, trying out um, in here. We can attach files, upload a file, upload a photo, take a screenshot or take a photo. Um, and we have the ability to chat with ChatGPT. We also have a whole bunch of settings that we can use um, here. And one here that is interesting is that we can change the voice of ChatGPT. And you can see here I'm using one called Juniper. I can choose hey, different. I'm ready to hit the ground running. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on first, just let me know. You can see that what we uh, also have here is the ability to have a chat. So I can speak to ChatGPT and it'll listen to me. Hi ChatGPT, how are you doing? Hi there. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing okay. I'm just doing a demo of your um, new Mac OS app that I'm using right now. And I'm just explaining how it works to my audience on YouTube. Um, was there anything you'd like to say about that? That sounds exciting. The new Mac OS app is designed to make interactions more seamless and intuitive. It offers all the features you're familiar with, plus the convenience of being right on your desktop. If your audience has any questions or needs tips, I'm here to help. Yeah, that's great. Am I able to uh, pa pass any text to you from my desktop while I'm chatting with you? Yes, you can easily copy and paste text into our chat. This makes it simple to share information, ask questions about specific content, or get help with documents directly from your desktop. Is there something specific you'd like to try out? Yeah, let me open something and we'll try this out. So I've just opened a Microsoft Learn article here and I'm going to try something similar to what was done during the OpenAI demo. Um, so let me just see if I can uh, take a screenshot of Safari, this here, and then say to ChatGPT, what does the Python code on this page do? And it just puts it there. So maybe what I want to do, you know, let's just uh, get rid of this a second. And then we're going to go back to our chat again. Uh, hey, ChatGPT, can you take a look at the code that I just copied? Yes, I can take a look at the code you copied. Just paste it here and I'll help you with it. And so you can see I don't actually have anywhere to paste it here. So I'm going to have to go back here and paste it. And then I'll send it to ChatGPT. But... Um, that's a much less useful um, use of this than what was shown in that demo. So I guess I can, I can take a screenshot of this. So let me take a screenshot um, and I'll say, uh, oh, well, I can't chat with it now. The chat function has disappeared. So I can just say, um, what does the code on this page do? It gives me a, an answer and it outputs the code that's actually on the page. So, I mean, that's useful, but it's certainly more clicks than was being shown when they did the demo in the OpenAI Spring announcement. 
And as it stands, it's really no different than if I just had a browser window open of ChatGPT and um, copied and pasted things into that. One thing that I do like about this is if I've just got a window open like this, I can come up to the top of my, um, my, window, uh, my desktop here and I can open the chat bar. I also have a keyboard shortcut to do that. And I can get chat directly on top of um, my, my windows here. I can do exactly the same thing. A screenshot in, ask a question. What is this website? out and it opens up the window and allows me to do it that way i think that's kind of neat it's a nice interface it's a nicer interface than just having the website open all the time but um it's not exactly what was uh, demoed at the open ai spring announcement and i'll certainly be looking forward to a chat gpt app that can interact more directly and purposefully with the content that I have open on my desktop. One way to make sure you set the right expectations and find success in meeting them when rolling out AI in your business is to get the right help. My new Copilot for Microsoft 365 adoption package puts together all the consulting and training services most small and medium sized businesses need when rolling out Copilot and packages them together with one transparent and fully understandable per user price. But if you're not focused on Copilot and need help with something else like working out if the ChatGPT app is right for your business use, I can help you with that too. We can outline a custom project, giving you the specific help you need to empower your business to its greatest success with technology. Check out the links below where you can get started with a no obligation introductory call to find out if my services are a good fit for what you need. Now, to be fair to OpenAI, they have stated in the ChatGPT app itself that this is not the final experience and an experience like the one we saw at their spring announcement will be rolling out soon. However, I don't think I can be the only one who's getting a little tired of the AI hype cycle, meaning we all have become testers of software that only somewhat does what it's supposed to in a bait and switch operation that seems designed to meet the ambition of marketing teams rather than actual users who pay real money for these services. In fairness, OpenAI has been more upfront about the limitations of this new app than Microsoft is about some of the limitations of Copilot for Microsoft 365, or Google is about its gourmet rock tasting suggestions. But I still managed to download this believing I might get one thing and then found out I got something both different and subtly worse. I guess given that none of us currently have the Apple Intelligence product Apple recently announced, and even when we start to get those features, we know they're not all going to come at once, this is a good stopgap for those who want to use AI on a Mac. After all, you're not going to get a Mac native Copilot app anytime soon as far as I know, but there's undoubtedly a trend here of overpromising that's hard to ignore. Should you use the ChatGPT app? Sure. It's both usable and useful. It's just neither as usable or useful as had been promised. And apparently it'll be getting better soon. But do remember that this is with the caveat I've added here so many times that for most ChatGPT accounts, by default, OpenAI can use the content of your saved chats for model training. So if you need this for business, make sure you're on a team or enterprise tier account. Overall, I think this app would be fairly impressive if not for OpenAI having announced it by demoing a better one. The tighter we can get the integration between what happens on our PCs and the AI tools we're using to assist, the more relevant the assistance of those tools will be. This was one of the reasons I was excited about Windows Recall before Microsoft screwed up that launch entirely. In comparison, OpenAI didn't screw up this launch. It just gets a firm head shake and the caution that I'm not angry, I'm just really, really disappointed. Maybe they'll do better next time. Are you disappointed with this new ChatGPT app? Or is it exactly what you were waiting for? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.